Hello everyone, this is Wednesday, September 19, 2018. I'm here to do three B of the other side of the Iran country for once again the hypothesis is called SR tally hypothesis, the other side of the Iran country for if the Jamaicans have Uzis, then they got them from Iran. Now for those who might not know, I've been on it's just, it's twenty eighteen. And I've sort of been on a journey doing research for about three years. Uh, I wanted to do a seminar regarding the African American criminal culture in Dallas, Texas. Now, when I was in graduate school, uh, you know, I have a master's degree in professional counseling, counseling, and I'm a licensed chemical dependency counselor. Uh, in grad school, I had to do a genogram. And it sort of just uh, goes over the history of your family. So uh, when I wanted to do a crime seminar, because I, uh, you know, I work with uh, criminals, I work with those who have been addicted, and I, I taught family education classes to family members of those who have been addicted. And uh, of course, I've been trained in criminal thinking. Uh, as counselors in the state of Texas, we have to maintain 40 hours of training per year. That is law if we want to maintain our license. So, as counselors, we have training. Now, we have, uh, prof you know, we have uh, licensed professionals in private practice uh, who may not be with an institution uh, that provides training. So, they have to find ways to maintain their training. Now, when I was at the juvenile department. Dallas County Juvenile Department, they allowed us to, uh, you know, have trainings because we had to maintain training hours. Uh, they allowed us to have training in any location as long as we put it in ahead of time. So, uh, you know, we train within our profession, uh, and uh, that's part of uh, becoming a counselor. Now, I'm not able to treat mental health, but I am able to treat addiction. Uh so I guess you can say that I'm an independent counselor right now. Now, um, so we're going to talk about the title that I had in the beginning. The title was called Crime Perspective Today, Making Amends, Telling Our Side of the Story, How Did We Get Her? Once again, it was going to be sort of like a genogram, but it was going to be over the African-American criminal culture in Dallas, Texas. Now, uh, you know, I've been going uh, back and forth with individuals who are maybe not familiar uh, with our profession and the training. So it started out as, you know, hey, I want to do a seminar. And then I thought, well, hey, I really want to do a documentary, you know. Uh, I recently had a, a friend who I was once close with in my, not, in my life. I'm going to call her uh, Denise Ross. Uh, we call her Wee Wee Ross. Uh, she just got convicted for 60 years for doing butt injections. And, you know, she uh, most definitely had an influence uh, in my young life. Uh, I also have another associate. Her name is Strawberry. And, uh, you know, she, uh, I don't know if she was involved in butt injections or not, uh, but, uh, you know, you know, and I have another friend, uh, Rhonda Rue. Uh, so these are some uh, individuals who I most definitely thought were qualified uh, to speak in my seminar. But unfortunately, uh, things had turned and it didn't work out that way. Well, hopefully I, I'm, I'm going to still have Rhonda Rue. I most definitely think she's qualified regardless of what anyone else says. I think she is most definitely qualified. So Run the Rule most definitely is going to help me with, with another documentary that I'm working on, and that's called The Lifestyle of a Professional Booster, Gotti Girl. All right, and once again, this is coming from the criminal perspective. So crime perspective today is the criminal perspective. It's not the police perspective. It's not the counselor perspective. It is the criminal perspective. What is their perspective? They've been involved in crime for 20 to 30 years. Uh, you know, if you ever roll around with a criminal, it's a different conversation, number one. Uh, we're doing different things. 
There's a different uh, way that criminals communicate with each other. And, you know, I'm trying to bring out that knowledge. And, you know, um, hopefully the outcome can be positive. So, once again, crime perspective today, goal number one is to have tier two criminals explain and give their perspective and share their knowledge on crime. Now, making amends, telling our side of the story. Now, as a substance abuse counselors, you have to teach those that who are addicted um, the 12 steps program, the 12 step program. And even if you're not involved in a 12 step program, one thing I always tell individuals, uh, you have to make a situational change in your life. A situational change means I leave a drug center, crime center lifestyle, and I move into a crime-free, drug-free lifestyle. And sometimes that doesn't happen over and overnight. Now, in step four, we learn about our character defects, whether those character defects was brought on by drug use, alcohol use. And, you know, at the age of 18, we develop personality disorders. Uh, antisocial personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, uh, narcissistic, nor, nor, I call it narcissist, narcissistic personality disorder. disorder. Okay? Um, so we develop personality disorders. We know with borderline personality disorder, we, you know, we want to make friends. All right? Um, you know, and, and, and can lead us into certain behaviors. And normally, if you, uh, if you develop uh, personality disorders, uh, especially for antisocial personality disorder, you have some uh, disorder. I mean, you may have had conduct disorder uh, as a, a juvenile, okay? Um, so what, you know, so when we make that situational change, number one, we have to recognize uh, that we have uh, character defects because in our addiction, and in our criminal behavior, we blame others. Uh, we continue to blame others. We develop criminal thinking, and uh, we cannot see no fault in our behavior. So when we make amends, you know, we recognize that we have had faults. We have had faults in our relationships with others. Uh, we may have had different ways of mating. We may have tricked with women. We may have, uh, you know, we have... Uh, taking advantage of women, and vice versa, uh, women may have prostituted themselves, uh, you know, you know, so you're trying to mate, you might not have a good understanding of how to uh, mate with a, 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 a another individual, Individual. so we may, ha may have uh, made some mistakes in all of that, and it, it could have been derived, once again, with our criminal thinking, a personality disorders, addition to drugs and alcohol, etc. So we need to make amends. You know, uh, we need to recognize that we have had fault in our behaviors. We have had some form of fault in our behaviors, and we need to make change. So when we make amends, you know, uh, the men steps. Uh, once again. Uh, you know, we, we have to uh, not only forgive ourselves, we have to forgive others. Uh, we, you know, it gives us an opportunity to heal. Uh, but one, but the main point, like I tell anyone that's addicted to drugs and alcohol or have a strange form of criminal thinking, change cannot come unless you recognize your part in that behavior. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, some people may not agree with the 12-step program. Uh, but the 12-step program has been a successful, uh, another form of, uh, of, uh, of recovery, uh, a recovery tool, and it has helped people uh, become clean and sober and change their behavior. But once again, when I make that change um, in our lives, uh, once again, we're making a situational change. Um, yeah, the change is... I'm leaving a drug-free, crime-free. I mean, I'm leaving a drug-centered, crime-centered lifestyle and going to a drug-free, crime-free lifestyle. It's not going to happen 
overnight. That's why we call them recovery tools. We have to have tools in place to make that transition. We got to replace friends. Uh, we got to change our social environments. Um, well, we have uh, we need to take our medications. We need to get healthy. Now, right now, I haven't been ex exercised. I need to, you know, I don't blown up. So I'm not, you know. So there's some things that I need to work on too. But once again, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, how you date and how you meet your five basic needs in life. Uh, we call it number one, love and belonging. Uh, mastery, uh, which is uh, power and control. Joy and fun, survival, freedom. How we meet those needs most definitely uh, have to change. Now we have physical needs and we have emotional needs. And we most definitely have to change the way we meet those needs. And it's not going to happen overnight. It might take one year, two years, five years. But you're making that change in your life. You're taking steps uh, to be successful uh, in your situational change, drug centered, drug free, crime free lifestyle, how I pay my bills, uh, everything that you do that was criminal or legal or addictive, uh, you're making that change. So when, so when I say uh, crime perspective today, making amends, telling our side of the story. And the fifth step says you admit, you admit once you uh, evaluated yourself. You look at your uh, uh, character defects, your flaws. You look at your furs. Uh, and then you let go of your guilt and your shame, and you can move forward. And the fifth step says you admit the exact nature to, of your wrongs, so, to your higher power. Now, when, when people say higher power, uh, some people get really offended. Why isn't she saying God? Okay, well, my client might be Jewish, Jewish, excuse me. He might be Chinese. A lot of Chinese are Muslims. Uh, he may be uh, from Pakistan. Uh, uh, so we have to uh, respect as a counselor, you have to, you know, and, and the United States was built on the First Amendment, freedom of religion, you know. Uh, you know, my client uh, may have been a, a Quaker. You know, if you've seen the documentary of the Quakers at 16, they got a decision. They got a decision. Um, is they going to leave, uh, the, I guess, the, uh, the religious or they going to go on and live whatever lifestyle? Okay, they got that choice at 16. Okay, but they might still, they might have left but still carry their faith a little bit with them. So that's why we say higher power is not to be disrespectful. Um... So, uh, so you meant to your higher power, yourself, and another human being. The high, the, another human being can be a sponsor, can be a pastor, bishop, uh, etc. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm healing. I'm going through that process of change in my life. And I need most definitely strong support. Uh, sometimes as family members, we have resentments. And... Uh, you know, as they say, resentments keep you sick. And for the client, they may have resentments. They might not want to apologize. The family members might have put them out. They might have cut off their support. And, uh, you know, as I tell anyone, sometimes uh, we're not ready to make amends. Uh, so we have to pray about it. And sometimes it's not good uh, to uh, make direct amends. So, uh, so you have to make, uh, sometimes it's not good to make direct amends. It's not the right, you might have uh, cheated, uh, might, might have dated someone's uh, husband and it, it's not uh, positive. I mean, it might not be a good uh, thing to go and uh, make amends uh, to the wife because it can turn violent. Um, so when we uh, make amends, you know, we are admitting our fault, we're looking at our behavior and uh, and we want to tell our side of the story. Uh, uh, as ex-criminals, you should be able to, you know, share your knowledge. Now, how do we get her? You know, how how did I honestly start out as a criminal? You know, there's many, you know, uh, you know, social workers. No offense. You know, we have risk factors. 
you know, uh, being uh, living in poverty. Uh, family, um, my father, I grew up in foster care. Uh, those are some of the uh, typical things. But, but, but I really, you know, I want from the criminal perspective to really dig deep. You know, how did you really start out in the game? How did you get here? You know, what was your introduction uh, to, you know, it, it, to, to you becoming who you are? What is your introduction? Because uh, I know a lot of people have their mother and father and had good support, but were highly involved in crime. So what, you know, how did I honestly get here today? You know, I'm here today. I've been in prison five times. I'm retired now. Uh, I've been in prison five times. I blah, 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 blah. How did I honestly get here today? So once again, the title... Of, the, of my documentary series, which is now a documentary, is Crime Perspective Today, Making Amends, Telling Our Side of the Story, How Did I Get Her? Now, when I started out, I wanted to really uh, talk about the women, uh, African-American women. Now, most definitely, as African-American women, we have... Uh, been doing some positive things but if you're african-american and you and you're around criminals and you've been around criminals over a, a lifespan uh you can most definitely tell that the behavior has changed uh so we have a lot of african-american women that are involved in crime and are struggling but what do i view some of the things that i most definitely noticed as you know, I always say, what well, a black man uh, leaves, and you know, he's he's going uh, to the uh, uh, to the uh, to other races. But one thing I can say that I have noticed about the black woman: uh, a lot of black women are most definitely are grooming themselves. Okay, and I think that's one of the major things. They're really grooming themselves. They got the hair nice. They got. They do have their makeup. Uh, they have, you know, the, the wearing nice clothes. But it, sometimes it takes a lot to be that woman. And uh, they are groomed nice and, and things of that nature. But as you know, and as I know, uh, formally, it takes a lot to be that woman. And sometimes we get caught up in behaviors uh, to be that woman. Uh, so, we're going to talk about, but this isn't, um, uh, so when I wanted to discuss the African-American woman, you know, because we most definitely have changed over a lifetime period in our behaviors. Now, we know uh, prostitution has been around for uh, hundreds of years. And, uh, and a lot of uh, ways... Uh, we most definitely have been involved in prostitution. Everyone has been involved in prostitution. Men go sell their bodies. Uh, they've been heterosexual men all their lives when they get addicted to certain drugs. Okay, so uh, we will always be able to utilize that as something, as, as a scapegoat. Now, I once admitted to myself now, I most definitely have changed my lifestyle, <laughs> and I have, um, I, um, I, I'm going to be honest, I, one thing I said that I wasn't going to do anymore is have sex with men for money, and I wasn't outside walking around, but, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it's just a different way of, uh, of, you know, being able to, uh, Utilize the easiest crime in America. Just put it that way. So uh, when I first, uh, as I'm going through this evaluation process, I say, you know what? I really need to go back to the crack epidemic. And, um, you know, because in Dallas, Texas, that most definitely, we, we had a crack epidemic. Uh, you know, even though cocaine was in Dallas, Texas, way before uh, crack came about um but there was a major change uh, I, I believe in our community as a whole uh, a lot of things has ha happened to african-americans especially with music uh with tv 
you know, uh, professional athletes, etc. So we have made significant strides, you know, uh, as as an African American community as a whole. But we are still losing a lot of women. But the sort of documentary, and once again, that was the goal in the first. Now I just want to do documentaries. Uh, uh, you know, I, you know, if I, if I get back into, uh, I don't know where where my counseling is going to take me. But you know, I'm, I'm also right now uh, looking into new things. I'm looking into new things, and one of them is is, is uh, being involved uh, in, in a documentary. And regardless of what anyone says, whether they feel like I'm qualified or not, I believe in this vision. Uh, I believe in my vision. I believe in my education. I believe in my experience, not only uh, in work experience, but life experiences. So I believe in me. Okay, so um, we're going to talk about uh, the uh, SR tally hypothesis, the other side of the Iran country for once again if the Jamaicans have Uzis then they got them from Iran now we're going to go back because I want to start and make sure that I go over everything as I as I possibly can remember uh, so before I go to the history of drug use which you learn in pharmacology of addiction uh, you know I took sex abuse counseling at Eastfield uh, you you uh, go over the history uh, of drug use when you get when you get to certain uh, drugs or whatever. So, but we're going to start about off with the colonization uh, of North America, South America, etc. Now, and for those who might not know, uh, you know, I use I have been using Wikipedia a lot. Uh, Christopher Columbus is Italian. Uh, he was a Spanish conquistadors. Spanish conquistadors come from Spain and Portugal. Now, uh, the Spanish conquistadors, with most definitely with Christopher Columbus and a whole lot of others, uh, some of them were Spanish, were, were from Spain. Then we had a few from French. And of course, Christopher C Columbus and a few others were from Italy. And uh, it is called... Uh, you know, they in the late 1400s, uh, they went to explore the world. And, and uh, you know, at the same time, the British and the, and the French. Now, the British, the Dutch, and Netherlands, you know, they most definitely formulated the 13 colonies. You know, uh, with New York City being one of them. Okay? But we're going to talk about Spanish conquistadors because I'm right here in Dallas, Texas. All right, uh, they started out in the late 1400s exploring the world. Uh, they, they had, uh, and before we get into that, uh, let's talk about the Roman Empire. Let me go over the Roman Empire. I'm going to look at my notes before I can be factual. Now, uh, just a second. Now, these are supposedly, okay. Now, according to chess.com, these states are modern day Roman Empire or had Roman occupation. Portugal, Spain, Italy, Andorra, United Kingdom, France, Monaco, Luxembourg, Belgium, Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland, Liechtenstein, San Marino, Vatican City, Malta, Austria, Czech Republic. Uh, Slavica, Slovenia, Rotia. I'm, I'm messing up these words. I'm not good with vocabulary. Hungary, Yugoslavia, Albania, Greece, uh, Romania, Bulgaria, Turkey, Georgia, Armenia, Syria, Iraq, Kuwait, Cyprus, Lebanon, Jordania, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Egypt. Sudan, Libya, Algeria, Morocco, Palestine, Turkey, Istanbul. Uh, so these are the main, you know, once again, Spain, Italy, parts of the United Kingdom, France. They were all part of the Roman Empire. 
The Rome capital is in Italy. All right. Uh, it was in Italy. So most definitely to start off with Italy, Rome, and France still have positive relations today. Uh, Roman, I mean, Italy and Spain consider themselves to be cousins, real closely related. So the Spanish conquistadors are exploring the world. They discovered the whole Caribbean islands. Okay? They, they, even though Puerto Rican is, is America today, it was conquered by Spain. Dominican Republic, Haiti, Cuba, Jamaica, Bahamas, um, uh, South America, which includes Colombia, Bolivia, uh, Peru, Costa Rica, Nicaragua, modern day Mexico, Florida, Texas, California. They had all of Louisiana. They had half America. They had the entire Midwest. So the Spanish conquistadors colonized um, you know, most of the world. And then they went to Africa and, and obtained slaves. And they placed slaves on all those islands in the Caribbean. Now in Haiti, uh, they kept going back and forth between Spain colonized it first. And then Haiti, and then French had some, um, took over for a while. But when Haiti got its independence, they killed all the whites. Spanish whites, French, etc. They killed off all the whites. Uh, so Haiti, uh, if you notice, uh, still have a lot of their African uh, heritage. Now, of course, when, when the Spanish conquistadors was coming to the Caribbean islands, there, there were Indians. And in some of those islands, they were killing off the Indians, or the Indians uh, were committing suicide. Uh, so they uh, most definitely had to bring in slaves uh, to colonize uh, the areas. Um, most definitely. Now, the Portuguese, Portugal, they conquered uh, Brazil. So Brazil was colonized by uh, Portugal. Okay, so eventually, I think the French eventually got New Orleans or Cedro. Uh, but the Spanish conquistadors conquered half of, of, of North America, uh, etc. Now, um, let's look at Mexico. Mexico border Texas. Uh, Mexico obtained their freedom from Spain in 1820. And during that time period, they also obtained a uh, black uh, uh, president, if I'm not mistaken, in the 1830s. Now, uh, we've heard of the Texas Alamo, Alamo War. Now, as I mentioned, it was the um, uh, it was a British most definitely colonized the 13, the uh, north, northeast coast, um, the Netherlands and Dutch, etc. Uh, but the Irish are going to come. Uh, the Swiss are going to come. Uh, the Germans and Jews, etc., are going to come. And uh, they're looking for land, and they find land in Texas. And they form, and they start the. Uh, Texas, the Texas Alamo War is going to start because uh, when they come, they want to place slaves on, on Texas land. Uh, so and and uh, the new independent Mexico, in which Texas was part of Mexico. Now, we know before uh, uh, the Spain came, you had the Maya Indians early on, and then you had the Aztec Indians early on. And uh, so I don't want to offend anyone, but, but of course met the Spanish conquistadors are going to mix with the Indians. Uh, so you know you have uh, we have uh, you know a new population in Mexico. Now, I know a lot of people that I know personally that uh, want to uh, identify 
with the uh, uh, Aztec nation. Uh, you know, uh, they want to identify with that. Now, we know there's a lot of Hispanic gangs in Texas. They have tattoos, you know, Mexican Mafia, uh, Texas Syndicate, uh, MS-13, Aztec Barrios, etc. And, uh, you know, they, they use a lot of tattooing to distinguish themselves, you know, because the Spanish, you know, once again, they have conquered, you know, uh, they have they come the, the entire Caribbean islands, and the whites that are left in those islands are are Spanish. So the home, the true homeland, as we might say, well, you know, we're born in America, but our true land we, we say is from Africa, and, and they might say uh, from they're, they're Spanish, they're from Spain, they speak Spanish, but they might be Colombian, they might be. Uh, Cuban, but they're Spain. They're from uh, from Spain. So let me read this where my notes, what I have on the Texas Alamo more, uh, Alamo more, if I can be factual. Okay, I want to be factual. Just a second. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read this. As I mentioned previously, Christopher Columbus was Italian and was a Spanish conquistador. With other Spanish and a few French, the Spanish conquistadors discovered the entire Caribbean islands, Florida, South America, Central America, including Mexico, half of North America, including Texas, California, Florida, the West Coast, etc. They were ranchers and brought horses, cows, and pigs to America. Ranching started in Texas in the late 1600s. They failed to completely colonize, lost their, some of their colonies to the British, French, and later the United States due to them being more industrialized. When Dallas, Texas was founded in 1845, they wanted to be a part of the Industrial Revolution. The Spanish conquistadors rode horses and wore hats. That's similar to the uh, Stetson from Philadelphia. Uh, but, well, the Stetson hat was created in 19, 1865. So that's sort of the part of the cowboy hat. Okay, let me move on just a second. I'm going to get into a lot of other stuff. We're going to bring up uh, the Iran Contra for. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just a second, I'm sorry. Just a second. I want to make sure that I have. Uh, because of the Texas Alamo more, once again, Mexico did not agree with slavery. Okay? Uh, they didn't want to, uh, um, they didn't agree with slavery, so the Texas Alamo uh, War uh, uh, was started, or the war be between Texas and uh, Mexico. And of course, the United States came in and assisted. And so Mexico lost. Uh, uh, you know, lost uh, every pretty much a lot of cities um, and states uh, to to the United States, and due to the Texas Alamo War in 1845, Dallas, Texas, uh, was founded by John Neely Bryan, who was a lawyer and an Indian trader. And once again, Dallas, Texas, uh, which was on, you know, it wasn't formed yet, but the land which was uh, colonized by Spain, you know, uh, Spain, Spain, uh, you know, they got the bulls or whatever, Portugal had a bull, you see the bull fighting and stuff, and the horses and the cowboy boots and the, uh, cow the, the, 
I think you call them, uh, I think it begins with a P, the Palermo hats or whatever, uh, really come from Spain. Uh, so that's pretty much about uh, Spain, uh, the Texas Alamo War. Uh, so, okay, I think I, this is it right here. What do I have on this? Okay, so, now as I mentioned previously in the other videos, when Spanish conquered, uh, uh, but let me, let me get, I'm going to come back to that, to the history of drug use. But when, when the Spanish, Spain come to South America, they found out the Inca Indians were eating cocoa leaves. Uh, so they most definitely fed the cocoa leaves uh, to the slaves. They gave the slaves cocoa leaves. All right. So, uh, yeah, they gave the slaves uh, cocoa leaves. And uh, that's what they gave them. Uh, so, uh, we know cocaine was created in 1860, 1860 by German uh, chemists. Now, as I mentioned, uh, Chinese immigrants bought opium uh, to America. Now, I want to uh, go into more detail about this. You know, once again, we're, we're colonizing. Uh, you know, the United States immigrants is coming to the new land. So, what I want to do... I want to talk about uh, the uh, British Opium War. Okay, let's talk about that. Let me read that verbatim. And then we're going to talk about the I Red Country for. Her. Now, and I, I want to mention that in. Uh, our problem, our prophet's American dope. He's talking about the French connection. Uh, he's talking, uh, uh, no, he, he in, in the documentary Detroit Mafia, he brings up French connection, you know, because uh, Detroit supposedly started selling heroin in the late, uh, illegally in the late 1860s. But as I mentioned previously, all drugs were once legal in America, okay, that all were once legal in America, uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned, Chinese immigrants brought uh, opium to America, you know, in China, they have opium, they, ha they had opium dens uh, back then, uh, you know, you have the Golden Triangle, the Golden Triangle is, uh, Laos, Burma, and Thailand. All those countries pretty much border China. Now, they say that the Chi Chinese Muslims and Chinese mu non-Muslims immigrate to those countries. And, uh, you know, they pretty much are the ones that are uh, having uh, the opium. Now, Laos uh, was once owned by uh, French. Now, they're talking about the French connection. And what I'm talking about is, a, is the Roman Empire connection. Uh, you know, once again, Spain, Italy, and French have a, have a close connection. But once again, Rome was the capital of the Roman Empire, was one of the capitals of the Roman Empire. Uh, so what I'm saying, you know, they're talking about the French connection. Um... You know, just like, I'm, you know, I'm in Dallas, Texas, and I got the cocaine, and I have a friend in, in uh, another city or another state that does a real good job of transporting, and I send my, you know, point A to point B. I'm saying it's a Roman Empire connection, because Turkey was also part of the Roman Empire. Now, they say in Istanbul, a whole bunch of drug traffickers are in Istanbul. Uh, sort of like in Colombia, you have uh, other people in Colombia, you have those sections where they're creating cocaine. Well, that's supposedly how Turkey is. Turkey makes morphine legally. Uh, they make, uh, you know, morphine. Heroin is really derived from morphine. Heroin was created as an antidote for morphine addiction. 
Now, in America in the 1800s, we had morphine. And then they created heroin. And then, I think, if I'm not mistaken, in 1853, uh, uh, the French or someone else created the hypodermic needle. Okay, so, uh, but we always had opium. You know, you smoke opium, okay? Uh, we had patent medicines, as I mentioned before. Uh, you know, you can order patent medicines. You had cocaine, uh, cocaine, water, alcohol. You had uh, heroin, or, or, you know, heroin used to be uh, given to children as a cough suppressor because the pharmacology effects for heroin is cough suppression, uh, analgesic, meaning pain reliever, and it helps you with diarrhea. That's why you have a certain symptoms. Uh, when you have withdrawal symptoms, and we call withdrawal symptoms rebound effects. And rebound effects are basically the opposite effects of the pharmacology effects. So you have, uh, uh, so those drugs were all once legal. You know, uh, you put, you have, you have your teas, they pad medicines. Uh, you know, you put in the alcohol. Uh, now, and this uh, D magazine mentioned that. Um, you, uh, you know, D Magazine mentioned that they are having, um, uh, they wrote an article on our, on our first epidemic. Uh, we had an epidemic in the late 1800s, uh, mainly regarding patent medicines. Uh, you know, people were addicted to morphine. They were addicted to cocaine. Uh, cocaine was uh, created in 1860 because, once again, all drugs were legal. Uh, we didn't have the FBI. We didn't have the DEA. We didn't have the CIA. I think we did have uh, customs. So when people immigrated to uh, to North America, they pretty much bought what they wanted to bring. And once again, they brought their spices. They bought their home remedies. They bought plants. They bought opium. Uh, you know, uh, you know, they might have bought some cocoa leaves. Now they say cocoa leaves don't last long uh, if it's not on the plant. Uh, whatever, they dry out too fast. Uh, so they, uh, you know, they bought all those home remedies uh, with them. Once again, they're immigrating to America uh, when they came to America. You know. Uh, now, I mentioned that the Irish sort of came late. They call them the Fighting Irish. Uh, you know, they, they come in. Uh, you look on Wikipedia, they're coming. Uh, they call it the Wild Wild West. You know, Wild Wild West was from 1860 to like 18 to, to 1900. You know, slave, slaves is, uh, you know, they, we, we ended slavery. Uh, now they say one in four cowboy was African American. Uh, that uh, I'm saying the word, excuse me, the Mexicans and Indians and whites uh, taught uh, blacks how to be cowboys. Uh, you know, they taught them how to wrench their land, whatever. And as I mentioned, Spain uh, started late in the, in the, in, in the industrial age, uh, uh, Spaniards were ranchers. Uh, you know, uh, you know, they have, uh, so that's why Texas have a lot of ranches. But the city of Dallas wanted to be industrial. Uh, the city of Dallas wasn't uh, founded by, by uh, the, the creation of Dallas, Texas itself uh, was, was mainly uh, formed by Germans, uh, you know, the Swiss. And they say also a lot of Jews uh, came, okay? Uh, other races. Now, most definitely, uh, we also had some Indians still heard that we had uh, the Comanche Indians. So, but let me go back to uh, the, to the patent medicines and drugs being free and uh, and legal in America. Now, we have Chinatowns in America. Now, that's one thing. Uh, but I'll probably talk to you about the British Indian War. So, let me get to that. Okay, so the first opium war. Was a series of military engagements fought between the United Kingdom 
and the Ong, uh, like this, Ong dynasty of China over their conflicting viewpoints on diplomatic relations, trade, and administration of justice in China. Hold on just a second. In, in the 17th and 18th centuries, the demand for Chinese goods, silk, porcelain, and tea in Europe created a trade imbalance between China and Great Britain. European silver flowed into China. Okay, hold on. To counter this imbalance, the British East India Company began to auction opium grown in India to independent foreign traders in exchange for silver and doing so strengthened its trade influence in Asia. The opium was transported to the Chinese coast where local middlemen made massive profits selling the drug inside China. Okay, so China uh, and the British, because China wanted also wanted to have control of, 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 of the opium. Now, opium, it, once again, Burma is no longer part of India, but it was once part of India. Uh, so that's the, that's the golden triangle. Uh, so that's where most opium is, is made at. Uh, it's right next uh, door to uh, Vietnam, etc. Then you have the Golden Crescent. And that's Afghanistan, Iran, and uh, Pakistan. Now, Afghanistan uh, is the largest opium producer or heroin producer in the world right now. Now, you have the Taliban, who's Islamic. And their belief is that Islamic individuals should not sell opium. Now we know what extreme measures they have gone, uh, have done or gone through to get their point across. Number one, they attacked uh, New York. Now New York have a lot of Italians in it. It was once a point of time in New York only the Italians can build buildings. Uh, you know, you have Chinese in, in Italy, okay? I mean, in, in, you have Chinese in New York. You have Chinatown. You have Chinatown in New York. You have Chinatown in San Francisco. You have Chinatown in Chicago. Okay, and if you notice in all those Chinatown, those are the three main ones. You also have a, 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 drug, a, opium drug, a major opium drug problem. And then we know what, uh, as far as they say in uh, Detroit right now. So um, I don't want to uh, offend the Chinese, uh, whether they're Muslims or non-Muslims or, or Buddhists, etc. But uh, in most Chinatowns, there is an a opium issue right now. And opium is sort of winning right now. You still have a lot of people on crack, but there's a lot of people on heroin right now. Uh, uh, meth, etc. These new drugs, K2 or whatever. Uh, so, so the uh, so that's how it, it sort of started. Now the French, uh, once again had had a country in in the uh, Golden Triangle. So there is a French connection, but that isn't. Uh, once again, I, I once again I believe it's more of a Roman uh, Empire connection with all these countries uh, still involved, still have positive vibes, you know, when a great Roman Empire went down, okay? Uh, so uh, I was watching House Hunters. I always watch House Hunters. And uh, they was in Italy. And it was, it was an Italian couple. And this Italian man says, this is Roman food. This is Roman food. So what do the Spanish all have, in, uh, you know, especially a part of the Roman Empire is uh, Roman, being Roman. Okay, so uh, so once again, as, as you know, as America is colonized, the Chinese immigrants is bring, you know, is coming to America. Now I'm going to tell you how uh, the, uh, the Italians started out. I'm going to read that verbatim. And I want you to know Chinatown is next door to Italy. I mean, to Little Italy in New York. Okay? Now, they say 
in in in, in Detroit Mafia that the uh, our prophets Detroit Mafia that they bought um, that they had a French connection. The Italians started selling um, cocaine. I mean he uh, opium. Uh, in um, I mean heroin in uh, Detroit in the late 60s. Now uh, I'm bringing up Detroit because you know I, I watched the Irish Mafia, Irish Mob on Netflix uh, almost a year. Uh, it was last year in 2017, and they talked about how they went to Jamaica and how they went to Colombia and bought cocaine uh, to America. They it was a it was a Canada. Now they talked about New York, the uh, New York Irish, and uh, if I'm in Canada, uh, you know, Canada borders the United States all the way across. Across, but in Detroit, Detroit borders uh, Canada, and I'm uh, I was uh, I was watching uh, the police challenge or whatever, and, and Irvin Police uh, did a, a challenge. Urban Police Department, a, a little suburb, with the, the former home to the Dallas Cowboys, uh, brought up this song. And I'm going to play it. I want you to listen to the words. I said, if I do this again, I'm going to play, uh, play the words. So let's do this. Uh, ain't no mountain high enough. And uh, when I listen to the song, I'm thinking, are they talking about slavery? Now, we all think, of course, it's love. But you know, when we rap, when we sing, we communicating. You know, in you know, Detroit, a lot of entertainers, uh, you know, you know, Detroit, what some people call the murder capital, drug was once the drug capital, or whatever. Uh, most definitely was a very, uh, you know, Detroit had it going on. You know, they had the. Uh, the uh, Ford, uh, the uh, GMC factories or whatever was there. So, um, uh, so they, um, so let me, um, before I get to this, now I mentioned uh, the Taliban. I'm gonna make this clear. Once again, they're supposedly is against opium or uh, heroin, uh, the making of uh, of heroin. Uh, for is for the Islamic, but uh, Afghanistan is also part of the Golden Crescent. Okay, so um, you know the Italians. You know if you uh, watch the Irish mob, we know Mexico is producing. Uh, is it, it's uh, it's it's producing. Uh, is now a producer of heroin, methamphetamine, and cannabis, uh, according to the CIA World Factbook. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Mexico might be the second largest right now. Okay, um, you know, once again, I mentioned that uh, uh, as Mexicans, they, they have uh, the Indian, they have the Spanish heritage. You know who do they? Uh, who do the cartels really identify with? Once again, Spain and Italy are supposed to be like this. You know they have close relations. So you know, once again, who's who's the don? Spain or Italy? Okay, so they're uh, you know the Spanish pretty much have the cocaine. They have South America, or whatever. They sending it all over uh, the world, and I'm gonna get into that a little bit. But uh, I'm looking at the Taliban. Are you really against the Golden Triangle? As far as the Chinese, uh, the British, etc. Um, uh, you know, you uh, you attack two buildings in America, which was uh, I know a Chinese man had an influence on it, and I most definitely, um, if I'm not mistaken, the Italians. May have gotten a contract to actually build it. That's how it used to be uh, in New York. Now, if I'm not okay, uh, so um, my God, okay. I sort of forgot where I was at, but I'm gonna get back on it. 
of the song. Uh, ain't no man high enough. So are they talking about slavery? Are they talking about love? Or are they talking about the cocaine trade? Uh, our prophet does. Uh, we, we, you know, uh, I told you I saw the Irish mafia. They bringing in cocaine to America illegally in the 60s and 70s. Once again, drugs were once all legal in America. They became illegal in 1915 when the Harrison Act was passed. The Harrison Act was passed 